Just like if I can get this from the brothers here, uh, what you do, uh, at what level of education you have right now, to set up the school, to the start of doing your tag. Just kind of introduction, so if I got to know who's sitting with us, so we can as well like contextualize and specify uh, the talks who, who we have. So inshallah, I'm starting with you, brother. My name is Rabbi Sikh Mohyuddin, I live in Mount Rood. I have two children here, they are uh, in high school. So that is the main purpose I come here. By profession, I'm a civil engineer, but I'm a project manager. So we'll see if they can follow some of So I know I'm focusing on you as well. What's your name? Shahla Omar. Which university do you go to? Okay, which school? Twenty Jama. Which year? MashaAllah, MashaAllah. What's your dream job? Do you have a dream? Yeah. Right, close your eyes and dream. <laughs> What's your dream job? <laughs> Is your dad? Yeah. Do you want to be like your dad? Uh, I don't know what could be the right advice. <laughs> Can I say don't be like your dad? <laughs> or like you should be like your dad? <laughs> it's a tough situation, yeah? Oh, ah, yeah, you will decide, yeah? Yeah, you will decide. Of course, inshallah. Omar, I'll get back, inshallah, to you in five, six years to ask you the same question again and follow up. Alright? Make sure you dream at least one night in the next five years. Okay? Well, which, which uni do you go to? You don't go to uni? Say? School? Which school? Mashallah. Look like a brother. <laughs> Inshallah, Which year? Eight. Eight. Did you dream in the last three, four years? Do you have a dream job? Dream what way? So, like, when you have your mobile phone, how do you spend your time on the mobile phone? Which game, for example, which show, what do you watch, what do you play? You know, such questions as well. Tell us something. YouTube, yeah, any show, any specific show? <laughs> Yeah, it's good as well, like, yeah, that we have this because some some of us would be kind of embarrassed about the question. I wasn't it's just like, yeah, write the question without a name. The lady already has that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if anybody's trying to want to talk, like, yeah, 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 like, yeah, please, yeah, feel free to write the question down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 What's your name again, at least for the year? Ali. Everyone knows you, yeah? Everyone <laughs> very much knows you. So what do you do? Um, what? Go to school. Yeah, is it something else? Yeah, like no, that's something big. I just go to school. Like, that's that's half of your life, you know? Like, that's that's what you do every day. <laughs> yeah, B10, yeah? Yeah. B10. Do you have a dream job? No. Not yet? No. Yeah, like, uh, we, we're going to do this dream practice in... 15, 30 minutes, I don't know. But we're going to do this dream practice, inshallah. Inshallah, we're going to do them soon. So, bro. Uh, my name is Tariq Roshchemi. Uh, actually, I came into Australia as a finance manager, but I'm working as a teacher. Inshallah. I, I have shifted my career from... Uh, do you regret working as a teacher? Yeah. Well, I <laughs> you regret, yeah? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no Thanks, advice. <laughs> no, it was one of the best decisions in my life. Okay. I'll ask you the same question in a year. <laughs> Actually, I've been teaching for two years. Well, I'll ask you in two years more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teaching Arabic as a science study. Ah, that's why. Yeah, like I should have asked what do you teach. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's something you enjoy, eh? Yeah? Something yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it's my yeah. passion, and I've shifted, shifted my career into teaching, and I think. Inshallah. It's been a trying decision, but the way I was going to continue, maybe I need to discuss this 
And I feel like the, the, the two subjects that you're talking about, like the finance and religion, like what Arab Islam studies, when it comes to your brand, they operate from different layers of your brand. Like, so the finance was from a side and the Islamic studies from different sides, yeah? So like, you not just shifted the career, like you shifted the way that you think, you know, like, so mashallah. Yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a you look familiar, like Sahidi as a name or Sahidi as a Sahidi, yeah, Sahidi, Sahidi. I belong. Sahidi. someone who knows what they need to do like I even ask students who are about to graduate from uni what are you going to do they still don't know they say like I didn't decide yet so like that's heartbreaking wow so it's good mashallah that you have this from now I, I, if you have a vision that's amazing so at least you have something to work on inshallah I can follow up on this inshallah I'd like to laugh on all this my name is Ahmed mashallah currently in year 12 doing the same mashallah as so? Yeah. Yeah, we'll <laughs> yes. Uh, I was trying to do a sports management in uni. Mashallah. Like specific, yeah? Yeah. Do you have any uni in mind or not yet? Uh, not specific. Just more like close, close, yeah? Yeah. I think like ACU is coming close to yeah. Like how far is uh, Black Town from here? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Like ACU is coming here. So like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be working with you very soon as well. Like, yeah. ACU is coming here. So, Zakhmullah here, of course, like, no discrimination, like, sisters, welcome, no discrimination, inshallah, get to talk, uh, or get to know what you're going to do later on, inshallah, but just to take it from there. Uh, I would like to ask a first question before we start, like, no lecture today, but just, like, Q&A. So, anyone got a question in mind in advance? Yes, sir. The topic itself, like, talking about uh, faith versus movement. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Like, uh, so, thank you. <laughs> so, so, like, so, like, uh, asking in different ways. Like, please give the lecture and don't ask us any questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like, yeah, like it's, it's a good question. So like, just before I proceed and talk about like what TAFE, what uni, and by the way, like I work at TAFE and I work at uni at the same time, so like, um, here and there, and just like I need to know the impression about TAFE and uni from those who know about them. Like, so what's your impression about TAFE, someone tells you on uni graduate or TAFE graduate? Like, what's your impression? TAFE should always look down on foreign areas, so you're done. My, my, <laughs> my, my opinion on TAFE is um, if you go to TAFE, you're doing something like an apprenticeship or like, you know, for a trade. A trade, yeah. yeah. A trade. And when you go to university, you're bachelor. doing a bachelor degree. or you're doing a degree, like something like a business studies or, you know, something, okay. like, something okay. like management or, you know. Something I, like. I tend to differ a bit. Okay. I started with TAFE and end up as a professional engineer and working as a construction manager. So 
it's, it's, it's the way if you want to end up being a tradie mm. or you want mm. to have a apprenticeship, you will be ended up as a tradesperson. Yeah. But there are different streams within trade. If you want to progress with, in your education stream, you can still start with trade and still go to uni, finish a degree, and still become a professional. That's what I'm doing. I finished yeah. five and I'm going to go to uni next year. That's right. So, so psychologically, we don't even take there are different streams. Yeah, so psychologically, is there any um, impression that you feel like they're not there? Because uh, I've seen people like they remove them from the resume. If you're Egyptian, yeah. <laughs> No, I'm proud of TAFE. No, I'm proud of TAFE. So actually, like, I started at TAFE with Cert 4 in Human Resources. Thank you. Uh, I started at TAFE with a Cert 4 in Human Resources. Then I got a diploma from TAFE as well, Human Resources. Then I moved to uni with the Bachelor Degree of Human Resources. Then I got then two different master degrees from two different <coughs> universities. But what I'm trying to say here is, first, like psychologically, in Australia, yeah, because like, I don't know if Egyptians know about TAFE in my So like, yeah, in Australia, like, yes, there's a perception that at TAFE, we only have trade, right? But at TAFE, and like, I studied and working for Ultimo TAFE, the city one, right? <clears throat> so we have a lot of business uh, studies, different things like HR, accounting, um, anything in business. Uh, some spaces as well, like for the um, uh, entrepreneurship, so it doesn't have to be for the job. If someone would love to be in the uh, business arena, like you start your own business or your own company. Um, just to give you the um, preview between here and there, like with Dave, it's more hands on approach, which means you do this specific task because tomorrow you can go to work and do it there. Right, this is TAFE. So when I give a assignment at TAFE to, stu to students, I give them a task that if they've been to the uh, work straight away after the task, after they complete the task, they're gonna do something similar. TAFE is more at the operational level, like something that you're gonna do at work. So for example, like you can get a certificate in customer service, so you finish it, you go to the workplace, you're very much doing everything that you have done at TAFE, right? So kind of, you lead TAFE with kind of experience. Not really long experience, but like a, a kind of internship. That's what TAFE is. Um, <clears throat> with university, is more kind of in depth to the theory and you design a system. So actually like at TAFE, you could be operating a system that someone not necessarily from uni, but like at yeah, the university level, like they go to the philosophy of systems. Why would we go to this path or strategy rather than this one? So like you more understand like what's behind the rationale of doing things rather than at TAFE, you just like go and operate, of course, under some operations, circumstances, if you have more experience, of course, you can design systems and improve systems later on as you go. Um, <clears throat> TAFE as well, like something that is really good, that's why I started with TAFE myself as a decision. Uh, it's kind of, you know, try before you buy. You know, like have you heard of this principle before, like you try first and then you buy. So for example, like you've been there for a um, quick certificate for, for six months. And in headshot, really, like that's how I started. I was thinking, uh, if I like it, I continue, if I don't like it, you drop it, so, but if you drop it, you got a certificate, you got something. The problem with uni, and I've seen this with <clears throat> my students when it comes to one semester, and then you don't see them again, and then you get to know that this name, of course, uh, at uni, the problem is maybe you don't get to know the face, but you see the name, you see that as they drop. So like, if they drop after a semester, they leave without nothing, they can get transcript saying like you have finished two subjects or four subjects. But that still doesn't count as um, a degree of qualification. That counts as a drawback, like you drop the uh, thing. So, uh, and that would reflect from HR perspective, would reflect to me that maybe they did not decide yet what kind of direction in life they're looking for. 
So like, don't really use it. If that happened with you, it's nothing wrong actually. But I'm saying, don't use it to apply for like, like for a job and say, oh, this is, uh, I'm good in finance. For example, I'm good in finance. This is what I'm doing. But actually show that you dropped the uh, degree. This is with the uni and how it's relevant to the job market. So as well, like with the uh, tape, you don't have to wait until you graduate to have a job. Like in six months, one year, you're ready to start. Just kind of like you're doing something. You're learning as you go. So like and that, that happened with me once I graduated with a diploma. I started applying for jobs. I was ready. And at the same time, I was studying full time at uni. So like, yeah, um, it just like, it's two different mindsets. It's as well like I'd say, you know. How do the employers look at you? Uh, very safe. No, no. Faith is respectful. Like you know, like when I say, like yeah, like maybe I can relate to the question that you're saying because uh, they are two types of education in a way. It's not really like this or this. This is vocational education and this is higher education. All right, two types of education. With the vocational education market, you see, like you know, they have private uh, providers and people like they have private colleges. This is where I'm reluctant to look at the uh, qualifications and people coming from this. Like, sorry, I'm just telling you how it works right now. Because, like, within the landscape that we have right now, a lot of dodgy certificates and qualifications that you don't know who gave you this. Who was your trainer? I have no proof that you have done this work placement. TAFE, as an organization providing vocational education, by the way, we have a TAFE higher education. I don't know if anyone knows about this. We have higher education at TAFE. So you can go to TAFE and get Bachelor of Management and some Bachelor of Degrees. <clears throat> Not so many choices, especially fancy choices like sports management and construction management at this stage, but like they're building up the uh, higher education brand for TAFE. We have these options as well. It's just like different functions, not as uni degree, but different functions. So for example, if I, I'm not sure if that could be the right example, like for example, like if you're a tech graduate, we can have you as operator or coordinator in the business environment. For example, like a coordinator, so like sales, for example, like sales representative for the area, right? Like you are in the area and you're doing the job yourself. Um, <clears throat> like for example, in banking, you can with you go for banking with the TAFE qualification, but your job gonna be, for example, um, teller or someone like yeah in the operation space. When you walk into the bank, you're gonna see them like they operating the system that they have. They have a system, they operate. So they get your card, they go in, and that's banking. This is a job. No, you stay. No, of course not. No one would stay as anything. Um, even with that degree, like this is something I will talk about as well. Like, of course, it's you know, uh, and it's a trend that is happening right now. If we accept it or not, a lot of people like they don't recognize degrees, and they still get jobs and make money. It's, I have to say, like, of course, like I'm from academic background and I love it, <coughs> but I can see right now, like people like they don't really like. Oh, I don't know the degree. Why do I need it? And they still manage to get a job. And I'm talking about big companies, corporates. Yes, they would not get you to the uh, senior positions, but if you have the news experience of a job, like of course, like you, like they consider that the experience that you have. <clears throat> so no, you're not gonna stay as a teller, but maybe you're not qualified or competent. And I'll explain in a minute what competency means. You're not competent to be, for example, like um, product manager. Like for example. You cannot be in charge of loans, for example, or credit cards as a product. This is a product of the bank. Yeah, the credit card. So like, yeah, you're not qualified. You don't know how the economy works. Um, <clears throat> you wouldn't know, like, uh, like for example, I don't know like, if we're in the mosque and if I can say this, but like, uh, did you watch the movie or any movie about the um, global financial crisis? So instead of like, explaining this, I'm just trying to ask you to watch a movie about this would make it more um, entertaining. Uh, <clears throat> those who ended us in such situation, yeah, during the global financial crisis outcomes, yeah, like the the guy who was, uh, like the people, like not only one person, like few people, like they already indicated this in advance, that 
could be based on extended in-depth understanding, yeah, came from education, some of them they got PhDs, some of them got university degrees. So I'm saying like, it's kind of a philosophy, more than uh, just like an operator. So you can start with tape, and of course you will go up, but for example, like you, you can be the branch manager, which means, with tape, which means, everyone in this branch operating, you are the boss. So you're a manager, but in certain level, all right? If you wanna go upstairs with the economists and with the people like they're operating the big money and giving the loans, that would need more understanding of different things. Like, um, you wonder, by the way, like if I just like tell you about the mix that I have of degrees, a lot of people, they ask me like they are irrelevant. Like for example, I just mentioned that I got bachelor after bachelor degree of human resource management. <clears throat> then I got master degree of communication management. Then the third one is Executive Master of Business Administration, like it's irrelevant, yeah? They look irrelevant. But for example, like if you're in banking, like you'd be impressed to tell you like we have in banking people like they are psychology graduates. And so like, how or why? Yeah, like you can recognize that, yeah? Like yeah, if you're in banking, they are psychology graduates, yeah? Because like they're selling you money, yeah? but they're not selling the product, they're selling the cognitive uh, product. It's, it's not like, like uh, for example, like yeah, part of the token mentioned the uh, global financial crisis. Why that happened? Like you walk into the bank, even like we don't have to go that far. We have the Royal Commission that we have in Australia. I'm not, have you heard of the uh, Financial Royal Commission? It's just like, why that happened? It's kind of, you go to the bank, just to do any quick transaction or ask a question or something. You walk out of the bank, buying a credit card, car loan, and if you're going there for a car loan, you walk out of the bank, buying a home loan. If you're going for a home loan, like you walk out of the bank, they give you something extra, you know, like how you go to buy, for example, like a shirt, so they convince you that you need a jacket. And I think I just need a shirt, like no, you need a jacket. So there is a mindset in business, banking, whatever that could be. I'm not sure about engineering, but of course, like you need to sell something. Of yeah, money. like the, this this mindset is saying we don't ask people and clients what they need. We tell them what they need. There's a mindset that's happening right now. It's like this materialistic mindset in business. That's why the bank, they employ someone who got high distinction in psychology degree. And like, by the way, sometimes you as a psychology graduate, you wouldn't think to apply for a bank. Like, at least as a graduate, once you graduated, you wouldn't think to apply for a bank. You would know that later on down the track that, you know what, that could be a space that you can work for. And by the way, sorry if sometimes when I talk, I talk about exception, which means I'm only targeting those who look for the high distinction, not in the degree in the career pathway. Like, for example, like if you want to be in banking, and I don't know why you would stick to banking, maybe because you mentioned the finance and banking. <laughs> like, yeah, if, um, if you need to go just and be one of the hundreds of employees, we have hundreds of jobs and everyone will take one. When I go to SIG right now, I don't know, they have about over 100,000 jobs. We don't have uh, lack of jobs, by the way. This is my perception, like those who say technology is cutting the jobs and technology making us lose jobs. Yes, you're right, but that tells me that you're looking to a way or like looking in a space that is not what the market looking for right now. What I mean by that? They're cutting these jobs, which could be repeated or easily done, but they're creating heaps of other jobs. Heaps of jobs. Go like read. I mean, go to Seek right now, and even LinkedIn or any platform for jobs. You'll find like technology is not cutting jobs. Technology is helping us to raise the quality of who we are. It's very competitive right now, and you're not just competing with people graduating from Sydney universities or Australian universities. Now it's globalization is making life tough for everyone. I'm not saying that to scare you, but like yeah, you're not really competing with only graduates from Australian universities. 
And part of it as well, like when you think I apply for jobs and people like they discriminate against me, I don't get something. No, actually not. It's not that. It's you're not ready yet. So like you can always get a job with TAFE, with university, but only when you not the average person that is in the market. If you need to be an average, good luck. You'll find a job, you will live, you have an income, everything will be okay. But as well, like this is not religion, yeah? Excellence, Ihsan. If you don't do things with Ihsan, you're just like, yeah, Mr. Average. And do you know the, the, the story of Mr. A Mr. Average? Do you know what Mr. Average is? It's just like, yeah, Mr. Average is a mindset. Mindset means just like, yeah, like everyone else, um, having a normal life. Um, yeah, it got passed. Being to uni just because everyone's going to uni, not because this is what I need and this is at least thank you for saying that I'm 100% sure this is what I want to do. That tells that you have a vision. But someone just like, yeah, got average, graduate um, from average degree and then get this um, average job. Yeah, they will end up as well like having average life, like average wife as well, like will accept average wife and average wife will accept average husband living average life, having average kids, uh, everything will be average, yeah? even have a car, home, everything will be average. I'm not saying like this wrong, Allah, alhamdulillah. Yeah. But I'm just talking about like, you know how you follow the crowd? Yeah, it's just like, yeah, and you ask someone like, like how's life, alhamdulillah, you say, alhamdulillah, mashallah. It's against our religion, against our religion, because Rasulullah Yes, yeah, not following the crowd, yeah. Inshallah, Inshallah. And it's all like excellence, excellence, yeah? Excellence is important. Like, for example, special alhamdulillah, we're in the masjid, yeah? Which means everyone's Muslim. That assumption yeah. is that assumption, alhamdulillah. So, we're going to come from Australian Catholic University, so I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah. Um, Do you want to see if anybody's got any other questions? Like, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Unless you feel like I'm um, expanding on a point, so like, yes. What are the opportunities you're talking about? Sure. Yeah, we'll get to that. I'll, I'll hold on this moment, uh, on this point, I'll get to that. Anyone got any questions? Going back to your uh, question to the education, I believe, it's uh, my personal experience as well, the education at your job entry level does play a significant part when you don't have an experience. If you are coming from a tech background, you can only target the job which employer is asking you to have a lower level or TAF level qualification. You cannot apply having a TAF qualification and no experience, whereas the employer is asking you, do you need a bachelor degree? Yeah, that's right. Like, yeah, like, yeah, we expand on this. Yeah, yeah, inshallah. Yeah. Especially like when it comes to the skills, this is where we need, we need to expand on this, not being the sort of average. Yeah. Like this is when I talk about the exception, having a psychologist working for a bank. Yeah, when they like recruit, I have to call me on the phone and say, Ahmed, why do you have a degree in headshot, degree in communication, degree in business? They say, like, you don't hear yourself. It's a skill set, I'm not building a job. But I have a question here, and sorry I forgot the question, like I was in the discussion. And it says, I think it's from a sister, so it says, like, I like a course at Australian Catholic University. Hopefully, you're not going to be my student, so you're going to have me. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm taking my courses at uni for next year. My mom said it's not. Shiru for Muslim hijabi. What do you think? Uh, both are right. But like I would go to the students and say no, it is so by the way we have heaps of hijabi uh, sisters at the uni. Uh, back then when I was a student at SU, I'm a graduate of SU by the way. So like yeah, and uh, if you go to the website on the marketing material, they have my name and my photo. I can show you this over my phone. Like yeah, my photo, my name, Ahmed. So like it's kind of inclusiveness uh, mindset that they go to. I, I don't want to be uh, at a position that I'm endorsing or um, promoting SU, but I do like I like it. Uh, no, we no, but I, I'm okay. Like thanks for this. Like. The discrimination that I can tell you about. Uh, I was the second top student when I graduated. The second, not the first. And for some reason, I don't know how, 
they called me and said, do you mind to give the graduation speech? So I gave the graduation speech at the Australian Catholic University when I graduated. They did not discriminate against me. When I said, no, I, I did say like, I just like kind of, I expressed my interest. And of course, like I raised my hands many times. Uh, I would love to teach at SU. They said, you're welcome. And now I'm national lecturer in charge in two uh, subjects, like one subject and the other one is the community engagement. National lecture in charge means you're leaving the team of lecturers teaching the same subject all over Australia, all the campuses. We have like about seven, eight campuses. The right one would be black down, so it's coming here. So I just uh, feel free to join ACU. Um, if your mom is here, I can talk to your mom, but like, don't worry. Uh, yeah, yeah, like no discrimination. And uh, I'll just say like how you like your resilience as um, a sister with hijab, just like, yeah, how would you feel if you, like everyone around you may be like your minority, like we had heaps of students, but just like it could happen in a class that you're only one, way. which, what would happen at UTS as well? You end up at UTS, you're the only hijabi sister in the, uh, in the class. And I'm a graduate of UTS as well. I'm a graduate of University of Nice as well. Like, I didn't feel that much difference between classes, except the environment of the whole university in a way that, for example, like SEU is a calm, cherished place. You feel like the buildings are old and you feel like it's relaxing. They have budget and they have money, like especially most Sydney campus, to make it A1 techno savvy building and I thought they still like giving you this relaxing environment you know like how you go to the uh, how you see the photos of the um, church and the old um, photos that they have for Jesus part of of course like the um, ideology and you know how they have goats and farming and like this kind of like this is the SU culture I've been to UTS it's kind of do you know the sweet and sour um, for example like hot and cold all of a sudden, city building, and I was UTS board member, by the way. I was sitting at the uh, board and uh, making decisions. The new library that you're going to see, I was part of the board, like made this decision on the left. So like, this is what like, this is not to show off, this is just to show you that you can. And I didn't plan for all of this. It's just like, I was studying, like, in Egyptian way, like, like, <laughs> uh, I'm studying, I don't know what is the benchmark. Just like I'm studying, I keep studying. And like, I don't know if this is too much or too low. Like for example, like one of the semesters I studied five subjects, three high distinction, two uh, distinction, or like whatever we're in, like, so two high distinction, three distinction. Just because I didn't know that this is too much. I thought this is the norm, you know? Like yeah, you have to study this way, so I studied that way, so like yeah, it just happened. Right, so like, yeah, then UNSW, you'll find as well, like, yeah, I have, like, with UNSW, it didn't happen that I had any Muslim sister at the executive level, not yet, but that could be one of the sisters very soon, inshallah. So, what I'm trying to say out of this, um, and hopefully this doesn't go viral for uh, the news media, but we need to contribute to rural really. youth. We need to be part of every way that we do. And um, when I became like UTS board member, I didn't really plan for it. Like when they said, we're looking for um, students to be in the elections, to sit at the board, and like back then I didn't know what that means. And when I was elected by students, I would say 90% of the students, they didn't even know, I don't know what Islam is, like my degree was communication management. All of them came from media background, which is, at some stage, I believe, mainstream media, they discriminate against people like myself, like Muslims. Don't we? Like, we know, like, mainstream, like someone working for Channel 7, someone working for Fairfax Media, whatever, like, they study with me. And just like that was week three, which means we only spent together three weeks. Week one, week two, week three. And I became board member, making decisions. Don't take it personal, just, just to motivate you that if you go anywhere, don't just go, study, leave as anyone else. If you're planning to go there, please go 
but just to show that the Hijabi um, sister or brother or the veil or like brother, like however you, you want to look, it's not about how you look, but just like to show that I can contribute. I can give something to the society. So just like, don't be Mr. Average. Whatever you decide. And like, let's go back to TAFE, even if you're going to be in TAFE, if you're going to go for trade. Don't just be Mr. Average. Be in trade, any trade that you like. We still need people in trade, but you are the best one who does the job, if you can. We're not expecting you to have this anxiety that you're not the best. Don't stress out, but just like at least have the intention that I'm not just going there to get a degree and finish or get a job done. It. It's a contract to do a job for someone. I'm charging the highest, delivering the lowest. And thank you very much. I'm very smart. Of course you are. But that's not the goal. Think of the intention before you do it for something. Are you going to make some money? MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, you're a millionaire. And by the way, heaps of ways to make money if you don't think of the intention and the impact, the impact for you need to do. You can even sell drugs like neurofin, Panadol, like yeah, things like that. Like yeah, like I mean the American drug, like, uh, neurofin, Panadol, like <laughs> So like yeah, you can be like yeah, the chemist, uh, industrial chemist for health. Yeah? <laughs> so in other question, hopefully, inshallah, like I'll see you next uh, semester, next year. Yeah, like next year, 20, uh, 20 semester one at SU, especially if you're studying anything relevant to business. Uh, I teach a subject called community engagement, which is I get to see students from all the degrees, and they can volunteer in the community doing community work, like place like here and SEU will give you good marks because you've been doing work in the Muslim community for Tottenham. You have placements for 35 hours. So that could be the subject that I get to see people not studying business or management. Any, any other questions? Anyone has a question? Well, I didn't get to know you. What's your name? Mohammed. Mohammed, mashallah. It's a new name. At least in the circle, but no one is Mohammed. Eh? Yeah. We have three hours, Inshallah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Inshallah. What are you studying, brother? Um, trading. Yeah, which tape? I'm not doing tape. Ah, oh, it's not tape. Oh, good. So, like, you already finished studying, yeah? Ah, oh, you finished studying. Inshallah. So, are you charging high or are you charging premium price? Alright. Alright. I'll get you more. I need a job, sir. Inshallah. Did you get a dream yet or not yet? <laughs> so, all right, just like something if you don't have any questions. Uh, question? Oh, sorry, okay. Uh, so if you don't just have a question, something about your choice as well. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, what's your advice on um, you know, someone who is you know, finishing their, their school in their yeah. education um, and wants to move on? Um, what's your advice on that? Like, how, how, how would you go about, like, say you're not sure on what you want to do, but you know you, know you want to like, you know, so Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what you so, like, I, I'll get back to the uh, incremental uh, pieces, like what I said, try to pull you by, like, take. Take the safe stuff. In six months, you spend it in, like, something that kind of introduction. If you like it, you can go to next step. Oh, by the way, uh, if you are a TAFE graduate, they're going to give you credit at uni, right? So it's not this versus this. It's just like, so I spent one year at TAFE, I got one year credit at uni. So you don't really start from scratch. So, and that's as well like if you have something in mind. I need as well like to talk about something regarding choices. How we make choices because uh, it's something that even myself I'll be talking about it, but it's something that it's not very easy to make a choice or decision, decision making. If you need to decide on something, sometimes it's very tough, especially if you need to compromise or especially if you need to do a lot of efforts like yeah. Do you know like sometimes how we decide that we're gonna stop eating chocolate? Yeah, like yeah, have you ever tried to think about this decision before? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all, all the bad habits that we have. So like, yeah, when it comes to choices, especially at the school level, and that's when um, someone like you, Brother Omar, or someone in the community, like when we step in and we talk to um, our younger brothers and sisters about the choices, how to make choices, they need someone to talk to, that's first thing. Second, and I just like I, that, is really true story. You ask someone who's about to graduate from to graduate from uni, and graduating from uni means you've spent about like three years at least minimum, yeah, having heaps of subjects, two, three, or four subjects every semester. So like you've been through all of the subjects, all of the content, all of the assignments, and you ask them like, what do you want to do? They don't know. I did not decide yet. If you want to. My only comment is, if I can help, please let me know. I cannot force anyone to come to me and help out. I say, like, if I can help, please let me know. So when it comes to the choice and this part of how we design our own life, do you know how to design your life? This is by itself a big speciality. Like, it's like you go for someone to design your home, you go for someone to design your wedding dress or wedding suit, but to design your life, you need, like, big team, you know, like, the, it's bigger than your business. If you're starting up a business, how many people like you go to ask for advice? Heaps. If your brother like, what's your friend? Tiny. Mashallah. Like how many stake, how many people involved in this? Someone you buy from, someone will come after you do your job and like it, it's a big thing. Yeah? So to design your life and just to give you a brief thing, just quickly a brief thing. Everyone plays, if you need to write this down or watch a video later on, think of it. You always need to have three lives in your mind. Three lives. First of all, like the first life is the upgrade of what we have right now. What is the next step? Like for example, if you are an accountant, what's the next step? Like promotion, for example. <clears throat> if you are a university student, so what's the next step? So at least this semester I graduate with better grades. Don't think of the job that you will have in five years and you forget the semester that you have in two months. Yeah, it's really important. <laughs> Alright, so th this is the first law. The upgrade of what you have. Your path is just going. Second law. Second law. And this part of risk management, but like, yeah, it's part of it. And Allah well, like, has always told us about this. Second law is, what if, inshallah, you wake up tomorrow, and you have lost everything that you have now. Job, family, degrees, and you have nothing of what you have today. What do you want to do? What are you going to do? How are you going to survive? You have plan B, which is plan B. Yeah, we need plan B. Third life, which is like everyone would love to have. If nothing in this life would matter, like there is like, yeah, no family would get to tell you what to do. Um, of course, like we always have the religion. I cannot say like no one would say or tell you don't do this. No job, no money concerns, no anything. What could be the thing that you would love to do? But you think, ah, oh, because of the family, because of the money, for example, I can't. Because people would say this about me, I can't. So you'll find people like with this life saying, uh, I would love to be a photographer. Photographer, this is sometimes people like they think, ah, oh, is it a bigger job? But we make big money, right? Like, yeah, make big money. So like, yeah, photographer, for example, like, yeah, I would pick out, um, I don't know, like someone just in painting, just doing painting for face portraits. You'll find like, yeah, this is the passion that you have inside. Ideally, at least myself, when we run such workshops with the third life, which is like something that you would love to do if you don't have money problem, if you don't have family directions, if you don't have any of this, this is where we start building on the decision. Which job should we go for? Always do what you love. Don't do what the market is looking for. Because the market will change as you go. By the time you graduate, the market will change. I've tried this myself. I've seen this happening so many times. Uh, even like, yeah, some students like we have with the University of the Sunshine Coast, I have more international students um, than domestic. So you ask the international students, why did you choose the degree? They say, because this degree will give us a visa. 
sad news. They changed the laws and regulations. And <laughs> <laughs> so do what you love, not what the market is looking for. Any other questions? Uh, just to be five conscious. Yeah, I thought that the accounting Yeah, great. And as well, like say, I'd say, especially in Australian <laughs> capitalism, you know, like the capitalism systems, no, five minutes, yeah, like uh, five minutes with the capitalism, we will always have accountants who need financial, um, financial, you know, like people working the finance, we have a financial well, advisor, planner, whatever, uh, but just like different skills uh, sets, and this is what I said, you're competing with everyone, not just Australia, so like, there is a big need. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm coming from the business uh, background as well, I'm kind of telling you. Like, well, just it's, we need someone who's different, we need, like the guy who discovered or sniffed the uh, global financial crisis, rather than the guy who made the global financial crisis. So like, yeah, we, we like, yeah, through this is what they're looking for right now. Data analytics, something that is, is everything, even HR, when I started HR, it was based on the, um, the human side of business now is based on the data analytics and everything with insights and everything is proven. So we will follow up on this inshallah. Uh, in Jimmy, uh, in Sikuni, say you may get the, the good mark in the HSC or in the ACA, and you want to get into Jimmy, what are there any other alternative ways to get in? So like, actually some universities would be like, the same course in different universities will ask for different ages. Some universities would tolerate um, the white ETA. But TAFE is the same way, the transition or the pathway for university if you didn't get the ETA that you want. And again, don't worry, you'll get credit for it. So like you'll feel like it was a university. It's just like, I would say part of it is psychological. Like I've seen students when they come to TAFE because of the ETA. Um, they get this something called self-fulfilling prophecy, which means you believe about yourself that I didn't do well, so you will start like living, okay, like, it's the end, you know, like, so like, you, you do more of less, so like, yeah, I'm not really showing up to classes, uh, I have students, they don't show up to presentations at take, and they think, like, you know, by the way, it's something to do, uh, maybe you discover this halfway through. Safe, we don't have marks. Safe, you pass or you fail. So not showing up to presentation, that means you fail. Like, like that's how serious it is because it's a skill set. Like you have to complete it all. So if you go to tape and like, pro, like at university, if you fail one assignment but you pass two, and you got fifty percent, you pass. Safe. Like you go there, that means you're serious. You're gonna take it next level. But like yeah, some like psychological side of it, which I'm sure inshallah will not anyone here would have it, that they go to take, they start like just like a young Christian, they be careless, they waste time, and they even do bad. Take as well, I like, would say, no, thank you, not competent. So like that could be as well like a different uh, story we'll talk about in our inshallah. But take is a good pathway, if you take it seriously. Any other question? One last question. Well, I'm the one question comes from my sister. Uh, this, does it make any difference with which university you have graduated from? <clears throat> right, I'll ask the clarification question before I give a specific answer. Uh, which degree? Any? Any? Uh, if it's for the degree I did in Australia at least, no, it doesn't matter. In Australia, it doesn't matter the degree. Like you need just to do good or to do well in the uh, interviews and the resume and how you show up as the personal skills. And I forgot to explain what competence means as I promised, but I will after inshallah. We'll have this after the session because I see like there was a wedding. Uh, so, uh, it's different between online special 
Okay, like I'll add, I'll combine this, inshallah. And so, I don't know, like, do you want me to be realistic or you want me to be uh, diplomatic? So, to be realistic, some universities will make it easier on you uh, when you go to the uh, job market, all right? Like, uh, on state. So, for example, like, I don't want to mention any names, but yes, some universities, if you finish, like, you can secure the job quicker than someone from other universities. I'll take this offline and talk about it if you want. And, and I'm being realistic and we say that in public, no problem. Uh, and this is not for anything, not, not for the brand, by the way. It's just for the assessment strategy, what you learn, the content, and the type of students that they have. All right, so like it's a kind of, they think this university has already done all the filtering. So like, it's like, you know how you leave big company, so any company will take you, not because you just work there, because they think this company has already done the filter. Like they say, you're a Harvard, uh, Harvard yeah. yeah. Harvard. Say, like, one of the problems that I always had, one of my degrees, like the uh, executive MBA, you can get a degree MBA for $30,000. The one that I have is for $110,000. $110,000. It's a deposit for a house that someone told me, like, you don't need this degree, it doesn't matter, pay this as a deposit for the house. But the degree that you will have in business, that's why I ask which degree, the degree that you have for $30,000 as an MBA, not the same, at least, support that you have from the university that you finish with, like, that's why Harvard, Stanford, no, no, not, not the brand, just like how they select students, the content, so for example, like, I, like, now we mentioned universities, but one university will ask you for three submissions, some of them individual assignments. You do that, you finish, you take a degree. Good luck. Congratulations, of course. It's an achievement. Now, we have in the market something that I, of course, I have to be frank about it. Um, academic integrity. Students, they buy assignments. Have you heard of this before? Yes. Students? Why are you smiling? You're like, yeah, feeling guilty? <laughs> so, students buying assignments, right? A lot of money. We have to wrap it up. So, khalas, inshallah, just a bit, you know, like, yeah, with other universities, no, they don't have a chance for this, so they ask you for presentations, something as conversation, come face to face, I need to talk to you. So, the way that they assess you, the amount of work that they ask you to do, they have debates. Yeah, they have a debate, so they get students to debate against each other. So like, when you graduate, they understand that you're really of a high quality. So like, it would make a difference, some situations, please try to be among the uh, top if you can. However, uh, like, some people like, they don't uh, consider SU a strong university, but like, I got the other, anyway, I got SU, UTS, UNSW, as I go. I found that some universities, they offer more support than others. Would it make a difference if it's online? If it's completely online, from HR background, I will need to verify this with other experience and some testing, psychometric testing, and some uh, verification more than just the degree. And again, yeah, just to. Point, this has to be true in the order to the campus, right? Could be, but just like I will end it up with just one statement that will shock you a degree or qualification. <coughs> will never get you a job. Just like regardless even from Harvard. Harvard degree will never get you a job. What will get you a job? Not experience as well. No. So it's the kind of thing, the whole thing, the whole the overview. The degree of qualification will only get you will only get you if you're lucky, the interview. It's just kind of license for the interview. And I would even say, not the interview, the phone call. So you get the degree for the phone call. If you cannot survive the phone call, yeah. don't think of the, the, the interview. If you cannot survive the interview, forget the job. And inshallah, we'll have follow-up sessions on how we build on this as we go. But just the statement that I want to say, qualification degree will never get you a job. It will get you a phone call, if you're lucky. Get you interviewed. Thank you. 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 Thank you